Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today I'm doing a playthrough of All Tre, which was designed by Antoine Bozat and John Grümpf. And yeah, the artwork by the amazing Vincent Dutre. And this one was pretty much my, I would say, Insta buy at, at Essen. This is typically what I do. I have a list and usually a very long list of games I want to look into. Yes, some of those are in theory must buys. Honestly, there weren't that many must buys from this year's Essen. But there are also some titles which are a big maybe. And then there are also these games where I see, I'm not really sure about it, but I will be open and will consider this as uh, whatever, uh, poof, I don't know, Insta buy when I see it. And Ultra was one of those. I walked by the booth, I saw how it looked, how it was presented. It was a very nice booth. I think I also shared some artwork and basically the uh, pre representation in the press room. And yeah, ultimately I bought myself a copy. Was also surprised after I had seen the components about the price point, which was relatively okay. From what I understood, and I could be completely wrong, this is based on an RPG. And this old tray is pretty much the rallying call of those rangers which we are playing here. It's a cooperative game. It's uh, not really a campaign based game, but it's a well, story driven game to some extent. It comes with different um, chapters and what are the chronicles? I think exactly chronicles. Um, replayability is one of the things I'm still trying to figure out because yes, there are some things that are about to happen, which when you have played the game for the first time, you know what's going on. At least some of the twists that are happening but there's on the other hand also a lot of randomization going on and that was basically what i'm always looking in a game like this more like a sandboxy kind of feel because i already have so many unfinished campaign games in my collection that i'm really longing for more sandbox kind of games and let's see what this game is all about and i think i was already talking to way or way too long so really let's get into the story into the gist of this game the game comes with a nice little backstory here i'm not going too much into detail right now so we have this witch king here was the high priest of the father of all monsters but what we are and again i mentioned that it's a cooperative game you are dealing with different chronicles each time you play the game or at least you can choose to play different chronicles each time you play the game and trying to manage your little communities around here you have a stronghold or a castle or fortress or what it's being referred to here you have to manage that you have to to build buildings you have to whatever deal with incidents with problems with events and whatnot and yeah ultimately you are making your way through this chronicle here and again i decided to go with the let's call it introductory mission it's a very short one it shouldn't take me that long actually to play this through this is the open doors with each chronicle you also have an assignment card and for this short chronicles there are three different um, uh, assignment cards available based on a short chronicles there are also long chronicles and also assignment cards for short chronicles they all come with different difficulty level again the game advises you to play this first chronicle here with a moderate difficulty level these are the two ravens here and that's basically what we are going with you can in theory completely ignore this assignment here but it really helps you tremendously to deal with the let's say final task of any given chronicle as far as i understood i played through this first one here so i will still try to act surprised so we'll not too much away and yes there will be spoilers in this game to some extent but that's also the reason why i decided to go with the introductory mission because i don't think that this is really a problem it's for you to learn the game and similarly to or similar to andor where you can still enjoy the game with new players simply by taking your self a little bit out of that so let's say you know all the twists and simply don't spoil the experience don't tell them too much let's let's have the other players make all the meaningful decisions and you're basically moderating through that's how i really also enjoy andor still a big deal in introducing to new players even though i know it, at least for the core campaign i typically know what's going on and I'm, I'm simply enjoying it still as for this playthrough i decided to play with three of those rangers here i drew them completely randomly i think the game comes with eight different ones if i'm not mistaken they all have somewhat let's say different kind of 
maximum health, for example, different special abilities, different, um, what are these, these refer to? I think professions, I think, yeah, that's a profession thing here. You can play this game from two to four players. Um, why not solo, you might ask? And I wonder that myself, this is all going back to some of the incident cards, the problem cards, and I think more the incident cards actually that have sometimes decisions, for example, and you should not tell the other player what they're going. Basically, similarly how I would play Eldritch Horror, for example, not giving too much away from an encounter card, for example, but I will cover it up and as I really have a bad memory, I already forgot what cards I have seen actually. So I think we should be good here and honestly, I, I really think you should be able to play this game solo without any problems. I think you have to still go with dual hand because that's how the sizing works as far as I understood. So you can play from two to four players, but it's also not really a problem playing this um, multi-handed. Yeah, so we have Selena, we have Gaspard, we have Lars, so we have a persevering, a snoop and the adventurer. And as I mentioned, the game really comes with amazing components here. So these are the miniatures, wooden miniatures, print, wooden printed miniatures here for our three heroes. This is pretty much our fortress in the three play game. You already start the game with one building. You get to choose from four of those. And I have chosen a profession that none of our players currently have. And I don't know what those are. I'm pretty sure this is being outlined here in the rules. And I, as soon as we're getting into the game, I promise I will let you know what those are. We also start the game with some prestige here, normally on level three because of this building that we were allowed to build as part of the setup as we are only playing a three player game. We immediately got one extra prestige here and this is our defense rating. Whenever one of those things falls down to zero, we have immediately lost the game. On top of this, we will also lose the game if we are basically making it to the final, let's call it, task here in our chronicle and will not be able to whatever meet its conditions. And then we are also losing the game. Then there are two cards typically, a, a victory and a defeat. I think in later longer chronicles there are even, I think, major victories and minor victories if I recall that correctly. But I'm sure we will get to that. So right now we don't really know what we have to do. So that's similar to games like Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, for example, or maybe even the card game, where you not necessarily know what's going on and what your goals are. Ah, it will unfold throughout um, the game here. And again, this, this chronicle is rather short. Apart from that, I have set up the game board according to the standard setup rules. So we have two decks of different incidents, I don't know, categories. And that's basically being driven by the assignment card here. So this, these two icons here should tell you which incidence decks you are using. I think overall there are five different decks and each of those decks have 25 cards. And again, given or depending on which assignment card you're playing, you are meeting different random encounters or incidents when you're playing this. So this is definitely a pro for the replayability of this game. And this is also what the rules um, tell you to do. So if you're playing a Chronicle again, the rules simply advise, try it with a different assignment because then you will most likely see different incidents and different requirements um, coming your way. And that's what I really like about this game. Apart from that, again, I have set everything up. So in each of those incident spaces of these regions here, we have now three incidents, which is definitely a problem because the more incidents there are, the more perilous those areas get. But I will come to that when we start playing the game. And one thing I forgot was to assign one ration to each of our heroes here. That's about it. They are not getting any real equipment cards whatsoever. So what you see is what you get here. I think from a table requirement perspective, it's somewhat modest, this game. You can have more rations and those rations are giving you either rerolls or extra actions during a turn, which can be um, incredibly vital, obviously. Your maximum is three. There are different ways how you get those. But again, I will cover that when we get there. And I think with that being said, we should be able to start our game. So it's finally time to open our book here. And again, artwork. I mean, it's Vincent Dutre. It's simply amazing. It's gorgeous and absolutely stunning to look at. Love it a lot. 
It's a short chronicle and our first chapter here is At the Gates. You set up camp within the crumbling walls of a once dazzling fortress. The observatory, a massive building, has somehow withstood the ravages of time and still contains several shelves of astronomical treaties, as well as a number of esoteric works. Place the observatory building tile on the game board, build side up for free, place it on an empty construction space inside the fortress. Awesome! So we will get something right from the get-go without uh, having to build this. So here we have the observatory. Normally this um, little tile here shows you what you have to spend in order to build this and you also have to use one of your precious actions here. So here we need some building materials and some fire materials which is a relative turn here. The rules are pretty clear about those resources. So this could be anything from firewood to oil you name it in order to build the observatory and this could be stone or any other building materials here for example but in this case again we have taken it for free it doesn't really matter on which building space we are building it here but we will go with the observatory on this space again for no real reasons what this does to us is when we build it we get one of those prestige points right off the bat awesome so we will start the game with five which could be helpful. On top of it, it gives us one of these uh, profession dice when we are moving into a test. And these two symbols here, all those symbols around this board, are the minimum amount of dice that you're rolling for each specific test that the game is calling you for. I think that's the scholar ability. So whenever we are being called to do a scholar test, we are tallying up or we are counting up all the symbols we have we are seeing on our character sheet in our fortress and then we are rolling that many dice. So in this case we have basically received another scholar dice for free. Maybe the game wants to tell us something with that. We will see about that relatively soon. Okay, let's have a quick look at our assignment card. Again, that's the recommended assignment card. A new start for this very first chronicle, but there is also an easy one and there's also a more difficult one. So we are playing here on the medium level. After a recent promotion within the Rangers Corps, you receive your very first assignment to restore an old fortress in a satrapy with a reputation for being calm to its former glory. You will also need to build relationships with the neighboring communities and check the safety of the communication routes. So what we have to do basically in order to make our lives easier, and that's again what these assignments are here for. Again, we don't need to fulfill any of those to win the game, but it makes the final task much more likely to achieve. So we have to basically secure two of those um, communities or regions in order to unlock this and then we are placing a token on top of that to indicate that that's done and we can never lose that status by the way as far as i know at least in order to do that a second time for this task here we need to again secure an additional one so three in total and we have to solve three problems when they are coming out and rest assured they will come out and for this final task here on this assignment we have to do yet another of those or secure another of those regions so four in total and we also have to build the workshop and the forge in order to complete that ideally we will make it through all three of those yeah not so sure about this but let's see about it at least we want two i think that should be our minimum goal one is really the bare 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 minimum i would think but having two is definitely much better but let's see about that in respect to the chronicle that's all we know we are not flipping any further uh the only time we will do that is when we are progressing through the game but right now that's not about to happen this will take us at least i think two more turns but yeah we will get there sooner or later but right now this is where we are so that's all we know and this is what we have to deal with so i think selena will start the game and you play the game in a clockwise fashion i will simply play it from top to bottom starting with selena and again all our rangers are here in the fortress this is also the space where we are keeping our resources we don't start the game with any of the resources but we will be able to collect resources from our communities here for example Sample or yeah they're basically all out here I think up here is also one space because we don't really know what we need 
other than we know that maybe for our optional goal we want to build the workshop and the forge we might want to get ourselves these resources here for the workshop we simply need a fire resource and again this represents fuel resources could be oil could be coal anything for the forge which would also give us one more prestige which is never a bad thing we might also need a fur resource which is any mm, animal resource could be fur could be skin wool etc and also another fire resource in order to do that so getting two fire and one fur might be a good way ahead into uh, basically a fulfilling one of those three assignments up there but yeah we only have two actions per player but for now let's remove those as we have to earn those resources and those buildings here and the very first thing that every player has to do is to roll the adversity die a very thick heavy wooden die which some icons on it so let's simply roll that and depending on the roll stuff will happen to the adversity marker and that's in theory would mean that the adversity marker would stay where it is and we would trigger that action again but we cannot do this on the chronicle space otherwise the game would be over too soon and yeah this is yeah we would lose if we would now flip it over and then maybe roll the same symbol again we would be out of actions and then basically yeah we would we would lose the game pretty much after I don't know four rounds or so in this case we are moving it one space ahead and this is now the incident space and the incident here on this one says it's a metallic tinkle but we have to um, basically roll another die to see where this incident is getting played that's the location die in each of those regions has a corresponding number and that's the eight okay which means we are moving the metallic tinkle on top of region number eight because i know as part of setup we have now four cards on the incident space of that region this means this region now has become perilous maybe something i forgot to explain the first thing that you do when you are making it to the incident space here with our adversity marker you check how many perilous spaces you have and you lose that many prestige we didn't have any of those but now we do have a perilous location over here there can never be more than four cards in here um, in each given space that is but all the more reason now to start sending some of our folks now to that area here in order to make sure we are basically getting rid of this so we are not losing too much grace because again if this makes it down to zero we have automatically lost the game and now it's basically the two actions for selena you can move you can build you can deal with an incident right now in theory could build we don't have any resources we could rest yeah in theory she could get rest and therefore get another um, ration for that or yeah i think that's a ration oh provision sorry a provision but i think that also doesn't really help us so i think the very first thing that we should do is to move right now we don't have an immediate need to deal with that because we know the incident space is it takes some time until we get back we have to basically wrap around here and then make it to this space again before we are making this little check here but on the other hand maybe still getting rid of it might not be the worst idea on the other hand we want to empty or secure those locations and you can only ever secure those locations when you basically get rid of all of those incidents in a region and on top of this you also have to build the tower of the fortress that will then protect it but once that these two conditions are met we are placing basically one of those i think secure markers or what are these called shield tokens with this side face up and this would then mean okay this region is now secure and that's basically one of the things that we have to do for all of our assignments right now so phew, that could be either way i still think let's deal with the problems where they are so with our first action we will move into this region again all the regions are now adjacent to this fortress here apart from that this region is adjacent to this region this to this but this is where selena is moving to with her first action with the second action she will now encounter this incident which will automatically mean we are getting rid of it because no matter the outcome of this incident we will get rid of it so that's at least a good thing so i will look at this card and we'll basically cover it also for me so i promise i'm not reading you any of those results and again that's the same thing that you would do in a normal multiplayer game here um sometimes there are um, 
let's say incidents which require you or will have results based on the amount of success. In this case, the rule suggests you that you tell the other, hey, there is something better to achieve if you're making, uh, let's say, an effort reaching more successes, for example. That's information that you should share, but not necessarily what those results would be. Okay, metallic tinkle. You prick up your ears and realize that the ring you hear is the alarm bell of a small fortified village. The villagers are being attacked by a giant. You gallop to the rescue and limit the damage. So we are now making, I think that's a called a soldier test. So basically we are trying to fight. Unfortunately, her profession is scholar. So she doesn't get any bonus rolls or any bonus dice from or for this test here. But the good thing is we will always get one die for each of those tests from our fortress. And depending on which buildings we build, we might get additional dice for that. But in this case, we are unfortunately only rolling one of those um, I think success dice test dice profession dice of course um, and I think they have pretty much a 50 50 chance on getting a success one of those requires you to basically make an extra effort so you're losing one health if you want to count this as a success and in this case I think we're only looking for one success if I have seen that correctly but again I don't know what will really happen so let's roll that die so I think you should be able to see that here so let's roll it and yeah that's a success amazing so let's see what the outcome is we have one success with your help the villagers are able to ward over the giant immediate action you can call on the community in the region which is amazing Amazing. cool stuff right now the um, community space of this region is not covered by a problem which means we can call on the community in this region in this case it's simple we are getting one of those building resources and we are placing it into our shared pile within the fortress and yes these are very thick resource um, yeah tokens basically wooden ones they are printed or I think it's a sticker or a printer I think they are even printed I don't know but again um, component quality in this game is simply amazing but that's pretty much the end of Selena's turn again she moved and she was dealing with an incident which we have gotten rid of now so that's definitely a good thing I'm not showing you the fail effect and by the way you cannot do the same action twice um, so you cannot move twice for example there is one character who can do that don't know the name but yeah we don't have them with us anyway but that's basically the end of her turn we are moving over to Gaspar. He also has to roll the adversity die. Every player is doing this. So this is one arrow, which means we are moving our adversity marker here to the problem space. So we will deal out our very first problem in order to determine where this goes. Again, we are rolling the location die. That's location number two up here. So let's see what we have to deal with. And that's the game shortage again. Lovely, lovely artwork. The hunting season has been poor. The village will run out of furs to keep warm in the winter. So in order to deal with this problem, we have to send one of our um, rangers in there and they have to spend one fur resource. Right now we don't have fur resources, so maybe we want to get there um, because as long as this problem is here, we can no longer deal with the community space, which would give us the fire resources we would actually need to build our forge or the workshop and on top of this we want to maybe or maybe want to resolve three problems at least to deal with the second task from the assignment card and by the way you can do these in any order so if you feel this should be your very first thing to do that's totally up to you but again you cannot reuse those secured zones here so once we are using one secured zone for this we cannot also use the same secured zone for for this task on the assignment card okay now now for the two actions of Gaspard. Um, maybe let's have a look at his special ability, the Snoop. If Gaspard is in a region, right now he is in a fortress, not in a region, he can use one of his regular actions to obtain any one resource of his choosing. So he would be actually perfect to have him move here into region 2, then basically generating the free resources then maybe with his next activation to get rid of it and then he could already start collecting those resources here for the others to build stuff so i think that may not be our worst decision let's do that right 
So with this first action, we are moving this part into region number two. And I really do love those, um, let's call it meeples for lack of a better term. They're not really miniatures, they're more meeples because they're wooden. But again, they look simply amazing. So we'll move him here with our first action. With his second action, he's using his special snoop activation. And we need some for these poor villagers here which again will go into our shared stash in the fortress and i think the maximum we can have of any of those four different resources are four that's typically plenty but that's again already the end of his turn the game is really moving very very quickly last but not least is last and there are no real game rounds you simply play the game until whatever you're triggering the end game either winning or losing the game so we will have Lars his special ability doesn't necessarily help us right now because when he performs a rest action he gains an additional heart and one additional um, provision so in this case he could go for a rest action simply to bump it up to three but again he wouldn't gain any more health and even if you're moving down here you're never out of the game you can no longer use the effort side on the profession die but that's about it that's you cannot really be eliminated from this game and um, you should never be eliminated from a modern game that's at least my opinion unless you're playing um king of Tokyo, which is totally fine and short enough but first of all he also has to roll the adversity die and again, we are moving one space ahead. There is a double um, symbol on this one here, but I think only one as far as I can recall. Majority of those are simple individual moves, which means the marker is now moving to the event space. So let's see what fate has in stock for us. Let's place it here. And there are two kinds of events, um, basically immediate effects like this one here, an ongoing effect. These typically stay in place once they are covered with a different event, for example. And here we have this surprise inspection. The commander of the ranger corps has sent a delegation to check on their progress. If our prestige is three or less, we would now lose one health. So I really think we are getting a hell of a speech. Luckily, we are at five, so we can basically ignore this. Nicely done. Let's simply discard this event so Lars can take his two actions and actually I noticed this is not the fur that's a fire resource but we wanted fur actually on the other hand oh that's a good point now maybe we should have gone for a fire resource because again yeah no let's let's stick to that sorry that was stupid no ultimately I wanted to have move Gaspard up there to region 2 in order to produce the fur ability and then use it maybe for his next turn to yeah, deal with the problem but that's not necessary he can still do that anyway so I think in this case this was more or less an error done subconscious level or so <laughs> so I think I will stick to the fire resource because again Lars can use it right away to start building our very first thing right and I guess should we do that why not so his first action will be to build the workshop therefore we are spending the fire resource we are flipping this to the other side and yeah this gives us another craftsman profession die when we are ever facing one of those things out there and again this is one of the requirements that we need for one of our assignments we still need to build the forge that is and have to secure one region but i think we should be able to deal with that anyway and in order to prepare for the next round maybe for the next action let's also have him move to a region and right now i want to have him move hmm. should we move him here to really start browsing for that or should we somewhat ah that's an interesting point now actually here we could exchange i think no let's have him move up here for his second action that's basically the end of his activation we are moving back to selena again she will roll the adversity i think as of now we should be able to speed things up that's one arrow which means we are wrapping around here coming back to our chronicle space so now we are advancing the story so let's turn the page here accordingly again beautiful beautiful artwork and this one says a mysterious portal a few days after you settle in a guard awakens you in the middle of the night in the middle of the courtyard a mysterious portal glows with a pulsing intensity a curious volunteer jumped through the portal and emerged a few minutes later with a wide grin and his arms loaded with riches place the portal tile on an empty construction space in the in the fortress and yes we have the portal tile right here 
we will place it in a second and it says some of your more daring elements go through the portal and come back loaded with food gain three resources of your choice amazing but that's about it this portal has just opened in the middle of our fortress we don't really know what it brings but we do know for sure that it did provide us three resources we still need a fire resource we still need a fur resource and for the problem up there we still need another fur resource so in theory we could already i think let's do that actually was a different plan and ultimately that's already the chronicle space for that so it's selena who can take her next action and i think let's have her continue to deal with this riverboat here so she's dealing with an incident so yeah let's see what it is and she might be the perfect candidate for this incident a small board a boat heads down the river you try to identify the coat of arms displayed on its hull. So we are now making a scholar test. She herself has one scholar profession on her ability, so she's already rolling that die. On top of that, we have the scholar die, which we will get from our fortress, and we have the observatory. So in total, she's allowed to roll three dice for that test. And that's certainly something. So let's see what we get out of this. Let's bring out her dice tower. By the way, her special ability allows her to roll one profession die for each of her tests. So that's pretty amazing. Okay, I think that's pretty accurate. In theory, we have three successes, but three only if we are making two efforts, which we can do. But in this case, we only needed one success. So we don't have to spend our precious health here. So let's see. You identify the boat as a Norse merchant ship. You seize the opportunity to do business with it. So we get any one resource. Oh, that's amazing. And looking at the towers we will have to Built. We either need a plant resource, and again, plant stands here for wood, for plants, medicine, herbs, you name it. Or for these bigger towers here, we need a stone and a fire resource. But right now, I think it's totally okay just going for the simple tower here. They're pretty much doing the same thing, but this more advanced tower also it increases our defense, which might come in handy at some point in time. But I think let's be modest and let's go with one of those plant-based resources which again we are placing into our fortress here she still has an action left there are no problems but she cannot go for the same action twice which means she cannot deal with the incident here again unfortunately this is now a pastor shop hmm in theory she could now move back to the fortress or to region one or region seven but in theory want to get rid of this uh, of these incidents here so i think for her because we do know that lars might have a good action at hand i think let's simply go for a call for the community's help here which in this case we get one of those build resources which we'll place in here and that's again the end of her activation let's move over to gaspar let's have him roll his adversity die that's one arrow which means again we are moving to the incident space which is now an unusual place so we have to roll the location die let's see where it goes again there are no dangerous um, or perilous areas out there so we are not making that check but now we are placing this new incident to region three which i believe is over here over the old bridge we place the unusual place we do know there are now four of those so this has now become a perilous region so something we have to deal with sooner or later but that's already the adversity role gaspar for his first action he's basically solving that problem so he's spending one of the fur resources here to get rid of that problem which is amazing so we will place it also next to our assignment card because we need three of those problems for one of those tasks with a second action i think he will check out this looted caravan here yeah let's do that and by the way as far as i could tell at least from the green and yellow decks there are two copies of each card in there at least from a title perspective which means yes you could in theory remember what's going on but that's as there are two cards with the same name in these decks basically all i was asking for paleo 2 actually 
<laughs> some more variety in respect to those things. So we have at least some surprises here. So definitely a job nicely done. This is a card which basically, which I peeked at where more successes could be beneficial, but let's see what it's all about. A convoy is stopped near a river. As you approach, you notice that there is not a living soul to be seen. It seems that the caravan was suddenly deserted. You clock draw closer to the cards. Okay, we have to go with this. What was it? Craftsperson skill, which unfortunately is not his strong suit. And we only, oh no, we do have two symbols in our fortress. One from the newly built workshop and one from the fortress itself. So he is allowed to roll two dice. And we already know that getting more resources might be beneficial. So let's see about that. Okay, so he's rolling two dice dice yep let's see what we get oh okay that's only one success and only one success if he spends one resources does he want to spend his bread to roll that other die again i don't know what what good it brings if we make two successes rather than one but just to show you i think we are going to spend one of our provisions to re-roll just that die here and yeah, hope for one more success. And no, it's not. We could go on, but we are out of provisions. So I think, yeah, let's simply go with the effort. Which means Gaspard is moving down here. And this is now the threshold telling us that we can no longer use the snoop ability here. That's all it, it says, but yeah, that's pretty grim actually. But at least we were able to get one success from this um, looted caravan. And again, I'm not trying to give too much away from this game. We still have the towers here, by the way. Um, you help yourself to some cargo since nobody seems to care. And I really don't know what the other successes or failures are. But in this case, we get another plant-based resource, which we can use to build an additional tower, for example. I think that's still beneficial. And overall, this incident is gone too. So let's place that in here. Let's get rid of these dice. Up next, it's Lars. Again, he has to roll the adversity die. He's up here in region one. Okay, let's see about that. And that's one arrow, which means we are moving to the problem space once more we have to roll the location die and that's number four again what was it again no i think the one before was three actually so we are placing this problem in here and this is the mild epidemic oh yeah where did i hear that before of course the current situation is far from being mild i know that the villagers are afflicted by an infectious disease spirits are low and some people are worried so we need to come up with a scholar test in order to get rid of this problem would be the perfect opportunity for selena unfortunately she is at least two activations away from that problem she has to move into the forest and then to here problem is she cannot move twice so yeah that's kind of a bummer but of course others can go there too um we are at least producing two scholar dice from our fortress so i think overall that's something we can live with and yeah this means we can no longer increase our defenses from this community again beautiful artwork that is Lars is up there in region one and and dealing with basically incidents that are adjacent to each other next to a tower location. So this tower that we could place in here would watch over these two regions. Um, so I think that would be perfect. So he will check out. Oh, that's the second card for the unusual place, by the way. So let's see what it does or rather what it is asking for. As you search the area, you realize that the grove you are in is the home of an elven dog. Okay, an elven dog. Mm -hmm. Surprise, the slender creature stares at you with its intelligent eyes. Okay, a scholar test, we already, yeah, he's rolling two dice because of our fortress, that is. So let's see about that. We need one success, that's one of those. And yeah, that's the success we needed, amazing. And this one says, if you wish, the elven dog will take you anywhere you want. Hmm, as an immediate action, we can go to the zone of your choice. Oh, that's not bad, actually. So we could move him to location four here to get rid of the problem there. 
course, all the others are relatively far away. Let's do that, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Let the go, uh, dog guide us. So we are moving here to this problem zone. And because that was his first action, actually. Oh, that's really working out very, very well. So for his second, actually, he can try to immediately deal with the mild epidemic. He still has to pass that scholar test, but he's rolling two dice now. And I think he still has a brat. So I think overall, that's pretty amazing, actually. So let's simply do that. This card here, by the way, I believe tells us that we need one success in order to deal with that. We do have wooden tokens in order to cover those, but honestly, I don't know why there are tokens down here. On the other hand, there are no other cards that would require you for a test without those. There are also one with two. So I think in this case, it's simply one success. I asked this on the geek so far. I didn't get any real answer, but at least that's how I understand those um, problem cards work. And again, there are cards that have two boxes and then you can start towarding this problem. Another player could go there. You could go there again. You get the idea. But in this case, we are looking for one success and that's not good. So yeah, uh, Lars has to spend his provision, which again allows him to spend one um, to reroll the dice of their choice. And you can also spend several provisions if you don't like the second roll either. So let's do that. Let's grab those two dice again. I I think we have five dice in total. Maybe this might even be the maximum we are allowed to roll. I think they're not, I think so. And yeah, okay, two successes here. So we would have done it no matter what. Perfect, this space is free again. And we have solved two out of three problems for the second task of our a new start assignment card. Hmm, that's pretty tempting right now. We are still some spaces away dealing with the um, secure locations, but we should get there sooner or later. And I think yeah, these were the two actions of Lars. Moving back to Selina, she's still here at the past tour shop or in region eight. But of course, we must not forget to roll the adversity die accordingly. Let's quickly do that. Where is it? Here is it. That's another one. So we are moving to the event space again. So let's see what fate has in stock for us. That's a nasty one. Uh, that's an ongoing effect. Violent storms, dark clouds blanket the satrapy. Powerful gusts of wind fell trees while heavy rains soak the soil. Rangers who finish their turn outside the forest lose one health. You must be kidding me. Ooh, we have to make a call. On the other hand, she might be okay with that, actually, because she could move back here. Yeah, let's think about that for a second. I think her very first action is pretty obvious. She's going to deal with this basically event here. Or incident. No, that's an incident, of course. And that's one of those where we can't do anything at all. It says you come upon a building under construction. A clan of pastors has decided to set up a shop near your fortress. What glad tidings. So we are now basically checking our prestige. Right, it's our prestige. Right now it is a five. And I think, yeah, that's a great one actually, because it says if prestige is five or more, the pastors offer you a welcome gift. So we get any one resource. That's nice. But now we are getting rid of this. And what resources should we get? As we don't know what fate has in stock for us, but I think we have all the four resources now in our supply. Let's go with one more fire resource for now, I believe, because we need it later on for maybe a second building, the forge. But the same is true for this one here. But I think we don't need it again. So no, let's let's stick to this. Let's stick to this for sure. And yeah, then what next? With her second action, yeah, there's nothing useful she could do right now in that area here. So she might want to move. Of course, she could go for another resource. She could rest to gain herself an additional provision. But again, she would lose one health now when she would stay outside because of the violent storms. So I guess, yeah, let's simply have her move back to the fortress. She might be able to build something with her next action. Then again, move out or so. Maybe she wants to start 
building that tower there. Let's see about that. But that was her turn. It's Gaspar who is next. So let's simply roll the adversity down. Let's try to speed things up. We are wrapping back to the Chronicles base. So let's see what happens next. Little pranksters. Okay. Just as the garrison gets used to the portal's magical presence, the alarm sounds in the middle of the night. Of course, this has to happen during night, right? A band of tiny imps appear and cause trouble. Place three imp tokens on three empty construction spaces. You cannot build on a space as long as an imp is there. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. The imps sow confusion within the fortress. Okay, we are losing. Okay, we are losing one defense. That could be a problem. And wealth continues to flow in from the other side. We still get any two resources from that. Well, that's really huge. And as a temporary action, while we are at the fortress, as long as the least at least one imp is on the board. Capture an imp, we need to go for one of those uh, craftsman abilities. We're building a trap. So we only need one success for that. And this would allow us to remove one imp token from the game. Huh. Okay, but that's okay. Gaspard is next. That was basically the space. And again, such a beautiful artwork. But let's not forget to place the imp and the tokens even tell you where basically what you need to do in order to get rid of those. We are losing one defense. I almost forgot that. So two more steps here could be problematic. So maybe Lars wants to spend one of his actions to yeah, strengthening our defenses or so. Um, but that's about it in respect to the Chronicle. So Gaspar can now take his action. He also wants to deal. Hmm, he wants to be in the fortress action. So maybe Oh, that's now a tough one. Oh, this event really sucks, actually. So in theory, he could go for the landslide incident up here. On the other hand, we also want to get rid of those imps. Pretty sure they are not here to, to do anything good for us. And he could move in and also build stuff, actually, which could also be very, very helpful. But I think, yeah, he's not fighting. I mean, the perfect, this would be the perfect thing for Lars to do because he's rolling one extra adventure. Or he's the adventure, he's rolling the craftsperson die. But uh, they're also rolling two, and I think this should be really possible, right? We don't really need another one of those. On the other hand, this could be problematic here. We could move in here and deal with the incident because the next space could be an incident space and we would lose one prestige. But this would also mean we would lose one. But I think that's OK. We are doing good prestige wise, right? And we already had one event or incident that was asking for this. That's a tough one now um, because I know what's going to happen. I will roll a die. On a one to three, he is moving in here and is dealing with that on a Four to six, he's going in here and he takes the hit. And yeah, but I, I really don't like this one. Or maybe let me make it different because he's also losing. One to four, he goes in here. Five to six, he's going for that incident. <laughs> okay, let this die speak. So he is moving in here with his first action and with his second action, we are getting rid of this card here, which again is definitely beneficial. And here we have another unusual place. You discover a pond hidden in a small grove. A strange sensation comes over you, making you shiver. You crouch down at the water's edge and notice that the surface gleams with a soft light. We are rolling a scholar test. Again, we're getting two dice from our fortress. He doesn't contribute anything to that, but that's not the end of the world. And it's also one of those cards where you or where you, I think more successes are beneficial. Again, that's the one information you are allowed to share. But yeah, with two dice, that's not amazing. But let's see about that. OK, that's a maybe. If we are spending it, he cannot spend any more bread, so he has to live with that anyway. But I think we want one success for sure. So yeah, we are spending a health. He's still doing okay. So we are dealing with the success. No, oh, I think I have to use two of those cover up cards now because again, I don't want to um, basically spoil too much of the experience for you. We had one success, just a few sips will do you a world of good. So we are getting one health back. That's amazing. But this is the end of his turn. He's outside of the fortress. And because of the beautiful violent storms here, we have to lose 
the health back again. But that's the end of his turn, moving over to Lars. He also has to roll the adversity die. Everyone has to, and that's a one. We are moving to the incident space. So good that I didn't, or that I got rid of the incident, because otherwise we would have lost now one of our prestige. Let's see which location it goes to. It's going to location four. That's basically where he is located. This is our next perilous location. And the original plan was to strengthen our defenses and then have him move to the castle, start dealing with some of those imps, or maybe start building um, more buildings, maybe the tower. And I think in this case, because yeah, we still have some time, let's do that. So with the first action, we are calling for the help of the community, which gives us one defense. Nicely done. Uh, we can nev never have more than eight of those. And I think if we exceed the eight, we get, I believe we can get rid of one Ooh, incident or so. Or is it a problem? Good stuff can happen. But again, we are at three right now. It doesn't really matter too much. With our second action, we are moving into the fortress, which means we are inside the castle wall, so we are not suffering from the violent storms. And that's basically the end of his activation. Moving back to Selina, actually. Yeah, so let's stay here. Let's roll the adversity die. And that's a two. Oh, 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 that's interesting. So we are moving one, two spaces here. We are not resolving the problem space. We are resolving the event space. And by the way, we can never um, basically pass over the chronicle space. Um, in that case, we would have to stop there. But this also means the violent storms should be over unless there is a second card in here. And yeah, it seems the violent storms <laughs> transitioned into heavy hailstorm. Wow, hailstones as big as fists are hammering the rooftops. The fortress is heavily damaged. Wow, we are losing one defense. Now I'm really happy I have used his action to rebuild our defenses. So we are bringing this down again. We are covering the violent storms. That's at least something. But wow, that was a hell of a turn. And ooh, that's now a, ooh, that's an interesting one. What are we going to do with Selena with her two actions? Because the storms are over, we can start going after the delicious aroma here. Yeah, we will, we might be able to secure this area unless something terrible comes up there again, but it's not very likely actually. I think someone should be able to build the tower here before there gets another, let's do that. So she's moving back here to region eight and we are dealing with a delicious aroma. Is that the first? No, I think we already had one of those uh, orangey brown cards. You follow your nose to the source of a scent, a bubbling cauldron in the middle of a clearing. An old woman offers you a bowl of her stew if you can afford it. So we can refuse the offer or we can pay anyone resource. Mm, and I really don't know this card. <laughs> That's now really an interesting one. Just to show you the most what this game has to offer, I think I'm going to pay the resource. And we are going with one of those um, building resources here. Yeah, let's do that. So what, okay, that's just one here. Okay, we can slide it over like this. And this says, oh, that's nice. You enjoy the most delicious stew of your life. We get two health. Yeah, she's fully healed, but we will also get one provision. Now that's helpful because, yeah, is it really helpful? She could use now two provisions, which she has to take an additional action. Of course, this it could have been poison. And if this delicious aroma comes up again, the way I would design this game is I would basically set up the same situation, but with a totally different outcome. <laughs> it would be me. Maybe they did that. I could imagine. The thing is, does she want to spend these two things now? And with using the bonus action, you can take an action that you have done before. So she could now move back to the fortress. I think that's what she's going to do. So she's spending the two provisions to move back in the fortress. In theory, this region is safe now. The problem is in order to really make it secure, we have to build the tower that is adjacent to that. Uh, but I think again, there are no incident that should that could come up now. Mm, so I think she should be, or the region should be okay, actually. I think so. I 
think so. Okay, but that was her activation. We are now moving into the thing. We don't really need to roll that die here because we're already on the event space. Oh no, we could roll this actually. If we're rolling this, we are triggering another event. No, okay, let's not be too quick here. Let's simply roll the adversity die. And no, we are basically moving back to the Chronicle space. So let's turn the page again. I love this donkey. Okay, yeah, I think more nasty stuff is about to happen. The scent of sulfur. The alarm sounds again. Pretty sure in the middle of the night again. This time, fearsome demon servants have come through the portal after wounding a handful of guards. They settle near the fortress and appear to be waiting. Place two servant tokens on two empty tower spaces. We still have four of those. We get to choose. I think we get to choose. Yes, we don't have to roll. You cannot build a tower. Blah, blah. Okay, we, we have enough spaces. On the other side of the portal, the veins of resources are starting to dry up. We still get one more resource and pff, I don't really know what to go with actually. I know we are going to spend one more fur, so let's go with the fur for now. And yeah, we are placing these two servants here. Again, beautiful, beautiful artwork. And as a temporary action, again, when being in the fortress, um, we have to fight, or we can fight a servant with a strength fight test now. But we need two successes to remove that servant. If we are only rolling one to a zero to one success, we are losing one health. And I think there's nothing, no, we have to roll these two successes basically right off the get go. Mmm, that's a nasty one. Well, let's place those two servants. And again, there is no reason not to play those guys in here. Should we start fighting those or should we go after those imps? <sighs> and should we? Ah, there are so many things that we can do. I mean, we cannot do the same action twice anyway. So I think. Think, oh no, but I think, oh, Gaspard is out here actually. He could move in here to get our defenses back up, but he's also our fighter now, so he's our best chance getting rid of this. We would roll two dice, but we also need two successes. Oh, that's a tough one. But are we going to lose two more defenses here? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But now we really have a lot going on and we still want to build stuff. And I think we want to make sure because the next one could be an incident space, which would mean this could be covered. Of course, there are a lot of ifs and whatnot, but I think ah, that was the plan. No, he will move in here and he will not fight for now. He will build a tower and we will go for the cheap tower here and this cheap tower requires us to use one planned resource and again the idea was to place this tower over here which means this tower is now looking over both of those regions here this one doesn't have any more incidents in it which means this is now fully secure so whatever happens no incidents can go here anymore again but this also means uh, no, we haven't even managed to complete our assignments yet. We have now one region secure, which is good. So in theory, we could go for either of those here, but this would still require us to build the forge. And this would be hmm, one more problem. And there, is, there are no problems out there anymore. So that's <laughs> problematic, this problem. Ooh, that's an interesting one now. I think we, our best chance would be to go for the forge. And then we could really maybe consider doing this. Yeah, I like that. I like that. But these were the two actions of Gaspard. Right. So next it's Lars. And with everything that's going on, all of our rangers are in here the find the fortress. So, but again, we have to roll the adversity time. Anyway, that's a one, which means we are moving to the incident space. So yeah, let's simply roll that. Okay, first of all, we are checking how many parallel locations we have out. Right now it's one, so we are losing one prestige, but that's okay. But now let's check where the strange fruit is going. That's seven. Seven is over here. So it was not the eight here. I was really hoping for the eight actually. But in this case, we already have two perilous regions out there. So this could become a problem. Maybe not so much in this very first scenario, but I could imagine with longer chronicles that that's definitely a concern. Okay, but what's Lars going to do? He has two actions. Mm, I think we want to build the 
forge next. Let's do that. So for the forge, let's look at this. We need a fur and we need a fire resource. So let's spend those. We are placing it here. We have enough rooms. We are getting one prestige back. Well, that's a good thing from this. And we get one extra fight die. Cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I believe that means we have one secure location. We have the workshop and the forge. So I guess there is no reason not to complete this task on this assignment here. Again, right now we don't really know what it does to us, but it's always helpful. It's good to have those. Cool stuff. Um, Lars still has a second action left. So I guess we are going to fight now one of the imps because that's his dice, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So he's fighting one of those imps with the craftsperson die. So he has one from his profession. Um, no, we have two and three. So three dice in total. Now that's something we only need one success here, right? Yeah, that's only one success. And it should tell us this on the card here, actually, if we need one or two successes. Yeah, that's that's. It's really nicely designed, but these are the little things actually. And wow, what an amazingly bad roll. And there's nothing he can do. There is no re-roll whatsoever. Again, each of these dice have a 50% chance, but it's me who is rolling those dice. So even with 90%, I would have missed that. Wow, that was amazingly bad. But those were also the two actions of Lars. So we are moving back to Selena's turn and she has to roll the that's one. So we are bringing out another problem. This could be good because again, we want to solve problems too. So let's see about that. That's the seven, which is again over here. So we are dealing with arms training. Now that's one of those who needs two successes in order to beat it. The villagers are being harassed by marauding monsters. The rangers must help them form a militia. Yeah, definitely not the best choice for Selena. I mean, we are rolling two dice, but oof, she doesn't have any provisions whatsoever. Ever. So I still think our best bet would be to go up here to region one because there are two more incidents here. And if we're getting rid of those two incidents too, this tower is watching over this. We would pretty much secure our next region. I think that's what we may want to do because she could complete it with her next activation actually. Let's do that again. I know what's about to happen. But for me, this sounds to be like the logical choice. But we also haven't dealt with any of those imps or those servants. But anyway, she's going after up in smoke. And yeah, guess what? It's another combat check. You surprise a group of pillagers who have come to raid a cluster of independent farms. You plunge headlong into the group, swinging your sword over your head head. Um, yeah, I mean, she has to deal with it anyway. And the, the incident goes away no matter what. So that's at least the one little consolation prize here. But we are rolling two dice in total. One from our forge right and one for the fortress. So yeah, let's see what we get. Unfortunately, we don't have any rewards. That's really killing me. But these are two successes. Amazing, amazing. I think this is only a one success thing. Yeah, we only are calling for a success or not. You chase the pillagers away before they can burn down the farmhouses. We get any one resource. Poof. We might want to build another tower. Do we? Yeah, I don't think it matters too much, actually. But yeah, let's simply either go for a fire resource or a stone resource. Yeah, let's go with a fire resource. I don't know why, but let's go for it anyway. But again, we have dealt with the incident up there. That's definitely a good thing. And that was her turn, actually, right? She moved and yeah, she dealt with the incident. So it's Gaspar who is next. Let's see. Again, we are moving to the event space. We haven't rolled the zero yet, as far as I can remember. And here we have, oh wow, now it's a proper epidemic, it seems, not a mild epidemic. And that's a nasty one. A mysterious disease is afflicting the residents of the fortress. A few fatalities have sadly been reported. So we are rolling the location die now, and depending on the roll, Nasty stuff can happen here. I'm really hoping for a four to six because our prestige is doing 
pretty well actually but yeah let's roll the die and that's what i really love about this game i've never seen this event there are so many different possibilities how the game could go yes the outline story is basically always the same but i believe later on in the longer chronicles you have some branching things that could happen so the longer chronicles you could definitely replay more often but on your way a lot of stuff can happen as you can see but let's see about that and that's a six amazing oh not, not should be really happy about the epidemic here but we can definitely afford to lose one prestige here cool stuff okay this goes on top of the heavy hailstorm but this was a one-time effect too and then what is gaspar going to do i think we have to fight on the other hand, he could also move out to the grave robbers, so we could deal with that. But on the other hand, I think we will leave that with Selena later on, who is already there. So she could go in here and then maybe move back or move over. So no, I think that's the better deal. On the other hand, he could now build another tower. And this tower could give us one defense back. And now that I'm thinking about it, this might be our best bet. And I think we will go now for the big tower here so that's one stone and one fire resource we are placing it here nothing really will happen but that we are getting one defense bag and i th still think that that's worth it and i think with his second action he's going to fight and again i don't know what are better for him i think here we are really rolling one to three four to six and that's basically the choice he's making of course yeah he has more dice for those but as he doesn't really know what's better let's let the dice speak again again one two three four to six four to six he's going for one of those servants here so he's rolling three dice in total maybe let's zoom out just a hair so that you can see those dice again right we have one we have two and one from his ability yet yeah. okay so let's see about that that's one success are you kidding me we needed two right yep he doesn't have the bread again well this is really bad again because i know what's about to happen okay but those were his two actions yes he was building the tower which was definitely worth it and we also build, or try to find one of those servants so over to lars one we are going to the chronicle so the game is almost over i know that a major problem yeah this is our final task of the game the portal is now behaving erratically and ominously it expands distorts and cracks with toxic flashes a work on demonology found in the observatory points you toward the only plausible explanation a major demon is trying to cross over into your world as in temporary action at the fortress confine the demon to its home dimension so we go have to go with a scholar which also explains why we have the observatory here the problem is the number of successes required is four plus the number of servants and imps still on the board so right now it's nine successes that we need to roll in one go isn't that lovely each goal you have completed right now that's one grants one additional success to each attempt so that's a good thing cool stuff um the problem is only one two three oh i think we are even lacking one more thing i think we even need one more no in theory selena could make it if we are using the success from the assignment but okay as soon as a ranger passes the test victory we are not adding any temporal successes or whatnot we have to pass this test if the adversity uh, then we are victory we are turning the page or we if the adversity marker makes it back to the chronicle space before a ranger has confined the demon we are going to defeat we are also turning the page we have basically two outcomes basically one's on the back side of this card and the other one is on the next card action so wow that's now a problem for sure i think this was lars's turn now and i think there is no question that lars is going to go after one of those imps now because we know these are much easier to defeat with only one success and they are still costing us one or one extra success towards the major demon so yeah i think he's going to go after one of those which is also he's getting one 
two, three dice for that. Famous last words, I know. Yeah, I think let's put it over here. Yeah, let's go after one of those imps. Cool, okay, that was good enough. So we have taken care of one of those imps out of the game for good, amazing. With the second action, I think we are going to build the library now, which comes with an additional of those scholar symbols. We have to spend one of those resources here. So let's bring it in here too, which definitely comes in handy for Selena. So we have one, two, three, four dice for her, plus the one success we have from our um, assignment card. On the other hand, is it really worth it now for her going after this one here? Because we still need one more problem. Well, that's also real. We can do that. We can really do that. But I think those were his two actions, right? He built and he fought. Yeah, that's basically it, right? And that was Lars's turn. Yes, indeed. So we are moving back to Selena. One, which means we are bringing out a new incident now. We have two of those markers out. We are losing one, two of those things. Again, that's only the introductory mission. Keep that in mind. We have to roll the location die. This goes to location two up here. Happy event, I think. Yeah, it's only three cards, so it's not another perilous location. That's at least something. The problem now really is, and that's a major problem. She's taking her actions now. That's not a problem. But... If the next die result for Gaspar shows this symbol, we are triggering the incident again. We will lose two more steps in here, which would bring us down to zero and we would lose the game immediately. Wow. Again, that's only the introductory level or mission in this case. Tough one, tough one. Should we really deal with that and then maybe move her back? Or should we simply put all our eggs in this one basket and trying to get rid of those imps and those because then she has at least uh, if maybe she doesn't even get another turn that's the major problem right now wow 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 oh boy so i guess the only realistic chance we really have is to move her back now in here and go after those imps and again if i would have told you again i knew this I would have totally gone for this imps um, with all the others. I would not have moved her out. But again, I wanted to act surprised. So I think, yeah, we have to move her back in now into the fortress and try to get after one of those imps, right? And she's rolling now one. There's one, two, right? One more die. Uh, two more, uh, two guys in total. And we're only looking for one success. So let's see about that. Cool. That's a success we needed. So we have taken care of another imp. But we still, this adds two more. So we need to roll seven successes. And the maximum that she can roll right now, if everything goes in our favor, is a five. But these were her two actions. It's Gaspard next. So we will roll this die. And again, we could lose this game here right now by rolling this symbol here. And <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> this is so brutal. And again, what this means is the adversity marker doesn't move. So we are basically remaining here on the incident space and we are triggering the same incident space, um, action here or, or event here. And again, the first thing that you do as part of this step is to check how many of those perilous regions do we get. And that's a two, which means for every one of those, we are losing one, two of those grace markers. And as soon as we are reaching zero on this track, the game is immediately over. If the prestige drops to zero, yeah, we have lost the game. Which, in a way, feels pretty cool because, again, we are. I'm not going to spoil you the, let's say, victory or defeat message here. Or at least I, I don't think that we are basically go because this could have happened much, bef much sooner before we actually ended up on this major problem here which now means yeah we would never know so i'm not going to turn this over and read the defeat effect here we will simply accept the fact that or i will have to accept the fact that i have lost this scenario again i must say 
Of course, again, I didn't necessarily play this ideally because I knew what was going to happen and I still let die rolls or whatever um, decide and whatnot. But we wouldn't have come to the final roll here anyway. But again, um, I could have basically kind of counted the turns and would say, okay, I have to leave her here in order to prep, maybe simply rest her to give her some more um, provisions for example prepping her for this final round but yeah obviously i wanted to show you what this game has to offer and how you have or how things unfolding here and i must say it's really a very simple game it's a beautiful game and also really fun to play i enjoyed every minute of this game maybe because it's so easy but it also comes with some very nasty decisions and of course some even nastier die rolls which i typically fail at anyway but <laughs> it's really really an enjoyable experience and yeah that's basically the first chronicle or it's not really a first it's pretty much one of the chronicles the introductory chronicle of Oltre and I really hope you enjoyed it if you want me to play another longer chronicle please leave a comment and let me know and I will pick one of the, of the other ones of course I'm going to spoil even more to you then and most likely it will come with a different assignment cards so we will also see different incidents out here we still haven't seen a lot of events so there is still a whole pile left of those the same is true for all of those problems here this game obviously calls for expansions and i really do hope we will see some expansions more chronicles more assignments coming out but let's see about that and yeah a huge shout out to all of my patrons out there really do appreciate all your support um, if you want to support my little channel here you can you'll find a link to my page on patreon you can support me here by joining my community like and subscribe this also helps leave a comment and yeah with that being said hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye